Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Bova. Here. This is Luigi. Here. This is Belang. Here. This is Brian. Here. This is Mongo. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Hey, Dr. Singh, you with us? He will be. Mrs. Warning here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Uh, we had an executive session at 515 to uh, discuss personnel. What is it? It's Tuesday, August 15th. It's our regular board meeting. What else am I missing? Anything? All cut up? No. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, first up, we have Gerald Parr. Uh, from the Pittsburgh After School Academy who would like to tell us a bit about their program. Step up to the podium, sir. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gerald. Uh, that's Leslie Parr. We are the uh, owners of the Pittsburgh After School Academy. She's the director. Um, basically, what we do uh, is kind of self-explanatory by our name is we provide after-school care uh, in the Pittsburgh, really in the Allegheny County area. Uh, currently, we're, um, uh, Ms. Isha, before you all came in, uh, we brought in some um, prospectuses yes, for you all to look at. You can keep those. Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, we're currently providing care uh, at a school called the Amani Christian Academy. It's in East Hills. Um, we're also working with other schools. We got approved by the Pittsburgh Public School District back in November. We're still talking to some of their schools. It looks like we may be provided. We're probably going to be providing care for the Urban Pathways Charter School downtown. Um, and we wanted to. Did I do something. Oh, okay. And we just wanted to come in here today and uh, we basically reached out to, we're trying to reach out to all the districts in Allegheny County to see if they would like um, to use our service. We are, we are aware that there's a, a program at Ramsey, is that right, the YMCA, the Wilmerding YMCA. Um, but we, basically what happened with me is I, I'm trying to go kind of fast, I know I only have five minutes. I uh, ran into a lady in a grocery store in Pittsburgh. Uh, she's from Monroeville. Five minutes because he's not speaking. He just said he has a rush. He has more than five minutes. Oh, I do. It's a resident on agenda items. Okay. He's presenting. I don't want to. He's a presenter. That, that was all Ms. Isha. I'm sorry, Mr. Park. I'm just kidding. That was not her. I say you have more than five minutes. Slow down. Slow down. Okay. okay. So take your thank, time thank you. and say what Keep you would like going. to say. Um, well, it's funny you said that because I was about to say a long story short, but the, the lady I spoke to, I don't know how after school came up, but we started talking in the grocery store and, and I mentioned to her that that we owned an after school program and she was, I don't know why she was, she was at a grocery store in Pittsburgh, but she's from Monroeville and she said something to the effect of, um, well, I could use you in Monroeville, my, my kid's school has a waiting list. Um, I, I don't know if she was talking about the Wilmer Ding or, or maybe it's another program somewhere in, in Monroeville, but but our goal when we started this was to try to reach out to, to every district um, eventually in, in Allegheny to see if they want our services. Uh, if you look on the, not the last page, not the second, I'm sorry, page number six, page numbers are in the bottom right hand corner. That's uh, Leslie Parr, just some of her credentials, um, Bachelor of Science in Education, Masters of Education. Uh, at one time earlier in her career, she was a cluster director over 10 daycare centers. She's also, uh, this is her third time being a director of an after school program. And basically what we wanted to do was to come here tonight and, and basically just offer our services. Um, we know that there is a program at the YMCA, but we still know that in Allegheny County in general, I'm guessing Monroeville, no, no exception, Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, the country, there's still a need for, for child care. Um, after school care included. Um, a lot of places have waiting lists. Um, we don't think that that's going to be a problem with us because uh, of, for, mainly because of how uh, what we pay our employees. Uh, we put an ad on Indeed about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we got 35 applicants. Um, the average pay for for a child care worker in, in, is about $16 an hour in Pennsylvania. We, we pay $22 an hour. We also guarantee our workers 20 hours a week. So. Let's say that we, that we did work here, say at Peter Stewart, uh, 2.30 to 6 every day, 17 and a half hours. We still pay them for 20 hours, even if they don't. I think that's probably what kind of response we get to what we pay because we guarantee the 20 hours. But um, we know that there's still a need. Um, we have the, 
the capability to provide after school care. In the prospectus, the not the last page or second last, but the third to last page, we, we don't normally include a, a, a copy of a certificate of compliance from, a, from another school that we're working at, but we want to do it in this meeting to show that we are, as I said before, we are providing care in mind. This certificate means that we that basically we know what we're doing. That the lady that, that uh, came and uh, approved us, her name is uh, Mandy Ori from downtown. And in order to get this certificate, you have to pretty much do everything. You have to uh, go through a, a compliance hearing. You have to have certain items in every uh, employee's uh, file, in every child's file. You have to have uh, emergency contact forms. You have to have background checks for the employees. Um, so we, we are an active, viable uh, after school program. Um, we are partnered with Child Care Works. Uh, have, you, have you ever heard of Child Care Works? It's the state of Pennsylvania's. Um, the ELRC. Right, state of Pennsylvania's, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. State of Pennsylvania's uh, subsidized child care program. So that allows uh, basically low income families to participate in child care. So if a family can't afford what we charge $60 a week for families that don't, that don't qualify, if they can't qualify, if they can't pay that, they can uh, apply with Child Care Works. Uh, Child Care Works may pay a majority of, of, of their care, and they may have a small co-payment for as low, low as five dollars a week, something like that. But what we would do, we would come in about thirty minutes every day, our employees before school gets out, uh, set up their food so be delivered every day by the Pittsburgh Food Bank, and they have a meal for them and a snack. First thing they're going to get is a meal, um, and then. They're going to get a snack later, but the very last page is just an example of what the daily schedule would look like. Uh, employees arrive at 2.30 um, to set everything up, the meals, 3 p.m. meal in cafeteria, some homework time. 3.45, first rotation. Rotations mean, uh, for example, if we have 36 kids, we might have three groups of 12. We might have, in first rotation, group A uh, on the really nice new playground you all have. Group B might be in the library doing something, and group C will be in a classroom. We're going to have one of the three rotations will be something that has to do with learning. It could be a TV with some DVDs, math, science, social studies, geography, history. Uh, first rotation, then a, a five-minute bathroom break, and a second rotation, like the kids in the, on the playground would go to the library. Library kids would go to the classroom. Classroom kids would go to the um, uh, playground. After the second rotation, 4.45, they come back to the cafeteria. Everybody gets a snack, and then a small bathroom break. Then there's a third rotation. And then around 5.30 uh, p.m. is uh, playtime. And parents, at some point in their parents start picking the kids up. But we're basically just offering uh, after school, uh, or after school uh, to um, the families in, in Monroeville. We, we, we know about Ramsey. Again, this lady that I spoke to, I don't know what, she, I know she's from Monroe, but I don't know what she, she may not have been talking about Ramsey. She may be talking about some other daycare that had a waiting list. But we know that in general, there's, there's, still, there's still a, a shortage of childcare that's needed. Um, we, we do what we do on site, so we would, we would need to use one of the schools. We do, we do pay rent for whatever space we need. Uh, if we enroll more and more kids and, and need more and more space, we'll pay more and more rent. But we think that we have something that, that can, that, that's, that's really lacking right now, not just in Monroeville, uh, but really over, over the country. But it's, it's, again, it's not as bad as well after COVID, but it's still a problem. And that's basically what we're here to, here to offer. I don't know if any of you have any Question. I know I still it kind of fast. I apologize. Okay, so, um, what? So, how many kids? How many kids are you looking for? Like, is there an ideal number that you can for, handle? For the or? program to be viable, probably a minimum of twenty. Total. Just, so, just, just to be viable, so we can pay our employees. That's a minimum of twenty. You said. Oh, oh, a minimum of twenty. Right. So minimum of twenty. Start. Where do you get additional funding from anywhere? Just, just child. The, the parents and child care works. So, if if if, if the children are if the family's low income. We've had parents in the past that didn't have any cocaine. That's kind of rare, but sometimes it's as low as five dollars. But if they qualify for child care, we could help them with that. The lady down at uh, ELRC is um, Sierra Farmer. We we know her. We can help. We can help them with their application. Also, enrolling with us is very easy. It's it's online. There's no paperwork. They go to our website, pittafterschool.com, pittafterschool.com/enroll. Fill a little application, and hit send, and their kid is in. Or they can call us and enroll over the phone. Yeah. Everything's very straightforward. Um, you said it's sixty dollars a week for the, is the fee. That don't qualify. Right. That, that pretty much means that they make too much money to qualify. Yeah, I understood. Right, right, right. right. And I think what about transportation? Tra uh, who asked? Trans oh, she's was, on Zoom. Oh, <coughs> she's asking about transportation. Right, um, 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Well, that would depend on you all. If you all, like, for example, if we were in Cleveland Stewart, if you all wanted us to just take care of Cleveland Stewart and maybe even some Moss side kids, fifth to sixth graders, they're, they're 12 and under, aren't they? They would qualify for child care works. They have to be five to 12 years old. To qualify for child care work. And we would take kids that are 13, 14, 15, but their parents would have to pay the $60 because at that age, child care doesn't, doesn't cover them anymore. But if you wanted us to cover just these two schools, if you want to do the same thing you do with Ramsey where kids can from any school can have a choice of Ramsey or us. But the family is responsible for picking up the child after the program, right? Yes. yes. So yes. we're not, yeah, we, yeah, we're we, not yeah. providing any transportation. No, we, we don't have we don't have any transportation. Gotcha. Okay. Go home. No. Robin, that was what you were asking, right? No, I was wondering if you had kids from other schools. Would oh. they be transported from one school to right. another? Well, you just had, if you just had Cleveland Stewart, but you wanted kids to come from <laughs> Ramsey, you know, how would that work? But from what we understand, the way you all have it is that kids from any school can be transported to Ramsey. Is that right? We're asking, yeah. yeah. We can go up and ask that, whatever you want to do. Whatever you take kids from any school, the, 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 I know that most schools have a rule that but, kids- But you're not bringing kids from other school districts into our schools, right? No, 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 no. Okay. It's just Monroeville. Just within. I, I understand. Just I, just I think that's what Robin was asking. Yeah. But kids yeah. go to some private schools that would be 10 miles away, like Monty or Central uh, yeah. Thea Bowman or Peniel's, I guess. Yeah, they, they, my, you want to we can take my question. Each. My question was, we have multiple elementary schools, so if you're at one location, mm -hmm. could a parent have their child participate? If you're at Cleveland Stewart and their child goes to Evergreen, what about transportation? I didn't know if you had transportation that was included in that or if the school would have to provide transportation. Yeah, we don't have any transportation services. Uh, we, we, we figured, is that how, does the school provide from? I said, Bonnie, would they be able to change the drop off point from their home to? Provide transportation would be Wednesday after school based program from all the elements. So if you all want to do the same thing with us, they have a choice. Let's say that, that lady I spoke to that Ramsey was the school that had a waiting list. Do you have a second option? Come, come to us. We, we don't anticipate have never say never, but again, we got 35 applicants in two weeks. And because we pay 22 an hour, because we hmm. promised them 20. If you all want to stop at 5 30 every day and they work 15 hours a week, we're still going to pay them for 20 hours. Gotcha. I think they like those two things. Yeah, yeah, so sure. Now we're getting paid 20 an hour. Yeah, yeah. No. So whenever we have a shortage of applicants, I don't That's know. what I was going to say. Are you feel, you feel that you have enough? I don't think we're going to have. I never say never, but I don't think we're going to have a waiting list. That's just my feeling. 35 applicants in two weeks. I, I, had, to I, I had to pause the ad on Indeed because we're getting too many applicants. Um, Does your program only offer five days a week, or is there like a three day a week option? Oh, yeah, we've had, we've had, we've had uh, Michelle. Michelle, uh, Liliana, and uh, Lydia came three times, two or three times a week. Times a week. She, paid, she was a paying she paid 12. 12 Dollars a day per. She paid twenty four dollars a day because it was two of them. Whenever they did come. Hey, this is a survey. They think it was many days they want. Yeah. Many days they want to do it. If they're in child care works and they don't come a certain day, the market was absent on our child care works one that we. Yeah. That works. Okay. Child care. Question. Now I'm looking at your daily schedule. All right, you're showing me on a cafeteria. Now, if we're looking at the elementary, the elementaries don't get out until ten to four. Correct, Dr. Rossi. Yes. So you've already had. I thought it's online. In the rotation. And okay. that's why I'm, that's where I'm looking at. So there would not be a lot of that. Okay. Online it says that uh Cleveland gets uh three ten. That's not it's not correct. That's no. not correct. Okay. No, the, the elementaries do not get okay. out until ten to four. So, okay, it was wrong. We, we can amend this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The point yeah. is, you can start. Yes. You can move yes. your whatever, start time whatever you want us to, do. to coordinate with when our classes are out. Right? You start with you can have whichever school you want to handle. Okay. You all, you all, can, you tell us what you want us to do. But, but gotcha. This lady, we're thinking there are parents that are sending their kindergartners home by themselves. Is my kid safe? Are they right. hungry? Gotcha. There's a waiting list. Understood. We, yeah, we just want to so, help. So, in. so that you, you put that schedule in to right. match I, I what thought, you thought ours was. From what I saw online, it said that Cleveland Stewart gets out at three ten. So I thought the elementary schools got out. No, no problem. But if we, we can amend this by an hour, we can. Okay. We, can, we still give them something. If it was a, uh, they have something called a super snack. I might just give them that if it's, if it's that late. Okay. It's, it's kind of it's kind of halfway between a snack and a meal. It's like it's, it's more than a snack, but not quite a meal. The, 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 the three hour block though would stay intact, right? We can do it. We can do it for an hour, two hours, three, four, whatever, whatever, whatever you all need. Okay. Um, we're completely flexible. We'll be here every day. We'll be here every day of the school year. 
We're available as late as 630, because we know, but, but, but whatever time you all want to stop. If you want to stop at six every day, we'll stop yeah. at six, five, three, but we're, we're, we're available as late as 630 for parents that might not have a traditional work schedule. And for the, for the board members that don't know, the ELRC for a family of two, so their, their, their lines, their uh, levels, their income levels are higher than typical income levels because who can afford 400 a month for daycare. So for a family of two to qualify, you have to make under 39,400. Okay. And then for a family of three, it's 49,000. It basically goes up in $10,000 increment. So it is not at the, the line of, of other things. So this is actually raised a little bit uh, for the purpose of, of daycare. Mm -hmm. so you guys Great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm Leslie Parr, and um, I just wanted you to know this is my son, and he'll be 48. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, This is my baby. <laughs> he didn't want us to know that. <laughs> He's like, my I baby. taught school back in the 70s. He was born in 75. I just want you to know there was nothing, there was nothing when he was a child. Uh, I had to be on the job at 6.30. I had, a I had some really tough principals at the schools I worked at. And there was just nothing. I don't know how I made it through. So what I want you to know is, <clears throat> I'm old school. I went to Westinghouse back in the day when teachers were just highly valued. You know, the old, you had a lot of kids on the honor roll. You, you, you were really proud to be on the honor roll. So what I'm saying is, I'm doing this because I know how tough it was for me. I'm doing this as a mission of love, not about money, it's about a mission of love. I wanna help the parents. There's no traditional eight to five anymore. We got women who are working 12 hour shifts as nurses at police stations. So, um, I will do whatever it takes to, to cover the needs. I take everybody on an individual basis. And so far as the children is concerned, the thing that bothers me the most is, there's a lot of kids at, on this campus who have the luxury of going home to a mom or a dad after school. But a lot of kids don't have that luxury. And I, that's where I come in. I, I help them transition their day from the busy going to class to class to coming to me, washing their hands and sitting down and we have a conversation like we're having a meal together about their day. And then uh, after we talk and have a nice, some sustenance, they need sustenance, we, we delve into the homework. I do have a math specialist coming on board with me. She's a retired math teacher from the DC system. And boy, she can take you and you can be plugging, and then when she gets through with you, you are passing on the honor roll. So I'm really proud to have her coming on board. And then they've been to school all day. So after they get work, you know, the work done, it's time to have some fun. And uh, I was just telling myself, we got to get some more. What do they call the girl? They play the football. No, no. Play video. Oh, we got to get PlayStation. I'm, try I'm trying, y'all. <laughs> got to get some PlayStations, you know, so they can play. Go ahead. The outdoor. Yeah. One thing Amari does not have is outdoor. That's so just a, that's kind of a new playground, pretty new. I think it's really, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. That we just saw. Yeah. yeah. It's just really nice. You know, nice. Yeah. Also, for the library online, beautiful library. Um, but uh, yeah, Amari doesn't have. That, that's really nice. I'm really really nice. Really All right. Listen, I, this is very exciting. Uh, we will be discussing this okay. in the coming days and weeks. We may have more questions for you. Um, oh, no, no worries. Back to the page four. Um, just our phone number, yep. email. Uh, Great. And you'd, you'd be able to start this year, right? Is that... Absolutely. All right. Yeah, Absolutely. we started in Monday last year, November 1st. I remember how we was it Monday. They weren't ready until November. We said, whenever you're ready for it, start. start, start, start. Thank you very much. You don't, you don't have to wait around to hear Thank the rest you. of this. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from residents on agenda items? No board member discussion items. Anyone have anything? 
I just wanted to follow up with uh, Dr. Rocky from anywhere with school patients. Uh, Mike, Mike yeah. sent the, I believe the uh, agreement to Bruce. Uh, wait on, like, they need specific information now. Is there any update on the litigation? To reference. Okay, so we still need parents to reach out to you guys here in administration and get examples of What's hey, wrong? my name is, my kid's name is, and I haven't gotten my right, pictures. Exactly. Exactly. Well, instead of reaching out to administration, can we give one person's name because we don't need everybody calling? Could, who would you want yeah. them? Yeah, it'd be Janet. Okay. Yeah, Janet Estock. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, as you all know, I sent you out a memo concerning social media and the litigation involving the social media and let me read this short statement social media companies have caused the youth of america mental health issues uh, there is a mental health crisis attributed to the social media and those people that are putting on these these platforms which is significantly significantly impairing a lot of our students Using the public nuisance liability theory, public entities are now beginning to hold social media companies accountable for their conduct and the damage that they caused or cause that are, they're causing. There is some litigation that's going on in California. Uh, I have passed out to you a contingent fee agreement, which is based upon uh, there's no fee paid. It's uh, they receive a, a portion of the settlement if or, or litigation, whatever happens on that. Um, they are seeking to have as many school districts as they can to buttress uh, this, this litigation against the social media companies. There's no cost necessarily to the district. The fee will be based upon the contingent fee agreement. Both Plum and Penn Hills, those two school districts have joined this litigation. And I, I suggest to you that in your best interest to also join the litigation uh, so that we can possibly benefit from any of this uh, the results of this litigation i have a sample attorney fee contract and motion that you would have to pass and, and you all have it at your regular meeting i would suggest that a motion would be in order tonight if you choose to join that litigation to put that uh, matter on the agenda and vote on it. I'd like to make a motion to put it on the agenda for tonight. Second. That motion has been made and seconded. Are there any questions on that motion? Jack, I, I'm going to vote in favor of this because I think that social media out there is pretty much a uh, a wild, wild rest right now. We don't know the effect that it's going to have on the kids. And so by Gateway School District or, and many other school districts, uh, standing up and facing the social media giants that are out there and saying, listen, you need to come up with some sort of governments, go governance or some sort of protocol that helps better protect children, uh, that lets them know that they need to find ways to do that. Now, we don't know what those ways are. We don't know what the effects are. But this just lets them know they we're, we're trying to find ways to protect our children. They need to join us somehow in doing that. So just as an aside, Jack raised this question maybe six months ago. And this is a follow up to that. So you're aware that this has been going on for a while. So the motion has been made and seconded to put it on the agenda. John has commented. Anyone else have a question? Nope. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So, so now it's on the agenda. And to make a motion to pass it. To join the join the litigation. Join the litigation. I second. That motion has been made and seconded to join the litigation. Again, any questions? Everyone understands what we're talking about? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. There you go. Thank you, yep. Mr. Dice. Thanks, John. All right, where are we? We're back here. Thank you, Bruce, for joining us. This is really helpful. You could thank me. With, I would thank John. No, okay. no, no. Please don't. Thanks All right. Thanks. He was ahead of us. We're going to move on to uh, Section A, Minutes of Previous Meetings. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the meetings, the minutes of the previous meetings. Any questions? 
Nope. All in favor, say aye. 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 Beautiful. Aye. Rossi, take over. All right. Uh, section B, Mike. Thanks, Dr. Rossi. Result of the Gateway Board of School Directors approves Section 1, B, list of bills, and Section 2, B, 2, financial statements as listed below. Go move. We got a move from uh, Mr. Richard II second from I think that was Mr. Williams. Anyone have any questions on the list of bills? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 He's going to take the personnel agenda tonight. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda items one through nine as listed in section D for the regular board meeting of Tuesday, August 15th. For item number one, accept the resignation of one individual. Item number two, approve the transfer of the following individuals to the physicians indicated in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement. Those individuals are listed. Item number three, approve the employment of the following individuals for the positions indicated. Several individuals are listed under item number three. Item number four, supplemental contracts, approve the issuance of supplemental contracts to the following individuals. One person is listed under item number four. Item number five, approve and authorize the following individuals for the volunteer positions as indicated. Item number six, approval of transition plan items number seven and eight approved acting superintendents um, item number seven excuse me approved dr rossi as acting superintendent according to the terms and conditions of the addendum to the current assistant superintendents agreement effective july 1st 2023 items eight and nine approved the negotiated terms and conditions of assistant superintendents Out. All right. Do I hear anybody? I move. So move. Motion's in May. Second. Second. Yeah. Any questions on this section? And before, uh, well, let's see if we have any questions first. Anyone have any questions come to mind? No, we'll let you take it. All right. So I'd, I'd just like to sort of read a little statement concerning the transition plan. I'm sorry for reading. I know it's rude, but. Um, Dr. Short approached the school board in late June about taking an FMLA leave to deal with family medical issues. His intermittent leave will extend through the start of the school year and understanding that this would be his last year before retiring, the board approached Dr. Short with an opportunity to extend his contract while serving in a capacity to assist Dr. Rossi's transition while also finalizing the Gateway Middle School project. His valuable knowledge and commitment to the district in which he has served for over 30 years will allow this board and the next elected school board a smooth transition. Though he is absent tonight from this meeting, he would like to wish everyone a great start to the 23-24 school year. Thank you, Mr. Sure, so if there's nothing further, uh, let's have a roll call vote on this, please, Bonnie. This is on everything. This is on everything. Unless you want to make a motion to pull something out. Yep. Oh, this is Aye. This is the lady. Aye. Mrs. Mondale. Aye. Mr. Reader. Aye. Dr. Singh. Dr. Singh. You did. No. Nope. Are you there, Dr. Singh? You're still on mute. Dr. Singh, you might be still on mute. We'll get. Aye. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Warren. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And thank you, Dr. Short. I, I, I don't know if you're going to be back here. I don't know if you're going to see this uh, for years of service. I hope you're back here to. Help us get going and, and to, to show your face. All right, we're going to move on to Section F. All right, Dr. Cheki. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approves and authorizes the following items as listed in Section F. Item number one, call, approve the college and high school courses, honors anatomy and physiology course through Carlo University for a total of eight college credits. Item number two, Carnegie Mellon, letter of intent and MOU with 
Carnegie Mellon University. Item number three, approve the agreements with the Belander Group for cybersecurity training. Item number four, approve the 23-24 school calendar revisions. October 6th, in-service becomes a school day, and January 2nd becomes an in-service day. Graduation class of 2024, May 29th date, is moved to June 3rd, 2024. Item number five, approve the agreement with Sound Foundations for non-public Title I services. And item number six, approve the Holy Family Specialized Learning Agreement. Uh, oh, we have to keep going, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I can't talk that fast. Item number seven, approve the sponsor to sponsor agreement with the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh and the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Item number eight, Gateway Middle School Renovation Project Baseball Field, Exhibit F, A, include the clay infield, cedar grass off field, fence, all fencing, backstop, and dugout pads at a cost of $505,350. B, same as the above, except the off is gonna be solved in an irrigation system for $625,350. Item C, provide turf for the infield only, grass in the yacht field, for a total of 641732 Item D, provide turf for the whole field for a total of 1163406 <clears throat> Item number nine, Atlantic Coast Sports Rental, approve the rental agreement as listed. Item number 10, approve the agreement with Stereocycle Shredded Agreement as listed in Exhibit G. <clears throat> Item 11, Approve Zellenskoff, Axelrod, and LLC to audit the financial statements for the 22-23 school year as listed. Item number 12, approve the real estate tax collector's audit for the 21-22 school year performed by Zellenskoff, Axelrod, LLC as listed. Item number 13, approval to advertise for bids from moving companies for the upcoming move from Mossside Middle School to Gateway Middle School at a cost not to exceed $40,000. Item 14, approve the agreement with PNC Bank to purchase the positive pay program as listed. All righty, so I think it's appropriate because there's been some discussion that a motion would be in order to pass uh, one through, I think it's uh, one through seven and nine through 14. Right. You go, okay. So that's the motion I would suggest you make first. I would suggest that we break out all except item number eight and vote on that separately. That's what I'm, that's what I'm right. doing. So that motion has been made. Is there a second? The second. Motion has been made and seconded. To vote on everything except number eight at this time. We'll Are there those right? Are there any questions on the others? Right now, Mike, how did we come up with a forty thousand dollar limit on the move? Did, did someone? We already had a, a, a person come on, and they, uh, Mr. Brown and myself, met him, told him about the move, the traders, everything. It's a professional moving company. He gave us a, a quote of thirty six thousand. Okay. So I figured that's in a ballpark. I'm gonna reach out to. To do, get two other bids. So, is there is there any anticipation of our folks being involved in the move? What what is well with with the school in session? It's going to be hard with our employees. Okay. So and the expectation is this forty thousand is going to get all of our stuff moved to the new school? Yes. Really? For the expert? Yes. Okay. Is this taking things from what's in the trailer from and also the from Wasside Middle? Just to get to everything that we've discussed that's in the trailers, the teacher's desk, they actually, the, the mover that we talked to was actually moving CMU the day we talked to them. So when they're and done with the move, they're, we're ready to... They're ready to move it, yeah. Okay. They've done a lot of school jerseys. They did Quaker Valley. There's a lot of... Ballpark, though, and that's how we got to that. But I'm going to reach out to other movers and get their fill for them. All right, any other questions on 1 through 7 and 9 through 14? Yeah, on yes, the education aspect, I'm just curious. Uh, Do we have at this time how many students are going to be participating in the Carlo University honors and physiology course? Do we at this time? Do we have any idea of how many? Uh, we don't have the exact numbers because some of the schedules. Starting in the fall, right? Yes. Whoa. 
So they, this isn't something they did with their counselors back in May, I guess. When yeah, they, they, this is something that they could have talked about, but we, but we have to take a look at the course loads to see exactly how many students got slotted in. And the MOU for Carnegie Mellon, are we uh, again suggesting the honors, uh, same, well, the uh, extra courses and so forth? Is, is that what the MOU is concerning with? No, the MOU with Carnegie Mellon is for tutoring oh, for it's the middle for school students. Oh, okay. And that's going to be available for everyone. Oh. Remember in the board report last week, and I said yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. Mike, yeah. yeah. number 14. The positive pay program. Yes. Have we had this before? Is no. there? Are we having a problem with fraudulent no. checks? I had in my prior school district, and I love it. And actually, we print about 320 checks a month, and we've had checks because a lot of businesses are getting their own scanners, and might scan the wrong amount. And then a lot of people now, a lot of theft is going on with some going on people's mailboxes. That's why they're still in keys with postal workers getting checks and they have the, the imaging and ink to change the amount of dollars. With this program, when we're done printing our checks, we upload it in our PNC Pinnacle. PNC Bank knows the amount, who the checks to and everything. So there's no there's no variance. Okay. So it's just another way to, to protect what we have. Okay. Are we protecting for a certain, have we had a problem or are you just based on other? We're starting to have problems. I had a contractor's check go through double the amount because it was one of their own scanners when I did the bank statement when I caught it. Okay. So I just want to prevent this going. For, for the volume of checks we do, it's well worth the investment. Do, do we have a total for number nine for the Atlantic Coast sports rental? What have we invoiced? Did we invoice anything before no, we'd arrange, no, no, no. arrived at a number? Don Hall, Bob, are you on? Yes, I'm on. No, we have not invoiced anything due to the fact that there was no approval yet. Do you know how many games were played, Mr. Brown? Or Don Hall, anybody? Not the exact number off the top of my head. All right, any other questions? Nope. Uh, let's have a roll call, Bonnie. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mrs. McBride. Aye. Ms. Mungo. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Dr. Singh. Aye. Mrs. Warren. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Boba. Aye. And Mrs. Scrooge. Aye. So let's go back to number eight, and uh, Mike uh, spelled out the four options and the prices. I'd just like to, to say, a motion that we um, approve item number eight. What, a, B, C, what, or D? Which option? No option. Just uh, item number eight. We have to, we have to get it back on. We have to be able to discuss it, right? No, you have to pick one. Have to pick one. I make a motion to approve item eight, number C, provide turf for infield only, 12505 grass in the outfield, base work to install turf, 516732 for a total of $641,732. Seconded. Okay, that motion has been made and seconded. Any more questions on that motion? No. Let's have a roll call, Bonnie. Yes. We can off that discussion? I'm sorry? Discussion. I just said, any questions on this? I do have a question. Oh. You are too fast. Yeah, yeah, I am, because seriously. Sure. Hey, so uh, we, we had, or not we, you, <laughs> had, there was money that was earmarked for this project previously, correct? 640000 was budgeted. Okay, so 640000 was budgeted. And then the difference between turfing the infield and the whole field is approximately 400000 Where? would that 400,000 come from? All right, now, if you, I sent on a spreadsheet and it should be attached, but we've done very well in our investments because you know the project's dragging out, which is a good thing. We've been earning about 50,000 a month on our investments. So right now, um, we, it was like 603,000 to date. So we could use that if you wanted to go for the whole turf and whole thing, or we could be a little more frugal and use that for the change orders in addition to the two million we already spent on the Tarasso floor. 
but it's entirely a board decision. But I just wanted to make the board aware of how well we've done on it so we have a little bit of a window um, to use that if you chose to go that route. Right now, just just with some rough numbers, we still got a little over 11 million left in the construction fund for the middle school. Estimate just to finish the building is 9,113,000. An additional 1.7 for the the football field, which we're working on the turf and the track. The additional change orders is 566,000, which brings you over a little. We're still going to be short about 277,000. So if we take that 600, put it towards zero, we'll be ahead. Say that last sentence again. What's that? What'd you say after the 277,000 short? Well, if we go your plan C, we'll have the 603,000 we've been making on our investments minus the 277, so it'll be a little over 300,000. If there's any change orders that come up or any other things that would come up towards that project based on the numbers as of today. So you're saying that would be extra, right? Right, right. Yeah, because we didn't plan on earning 603000 on investments at the time this money was was put in the bank. But since the project's been dragging out, it was just kind of a, a hidden gem. All right. And then if, if, um, if we went hypothetically with D, Where's the difference coming from? It would have to be transferred from the general fund. So we'd be borrowing from well, our fund balance, fund balance to pay for the whole turf field turf. versus just the right. infield only. Right. And there could be change or work order changes on that as well, or not likely? There could be, yeah, coming. I mean, we're coming down to home stretch, so. Sure. Okay. Are there any more questions on section C of number eight? Yeah, I think C is a great compromise. We get a little bit of turf. We stay pretty close to budget. Coach Hall, are you on? Coach Don Hall. Don Hall, are you there? Nope. All right. Gary, have a roll call, please. Yes. Hey, I'm yes. actually up here. Oh. Is that Don? I apologize. I couldn't uh, I couldn't get it. There's some, something wrong with my butt and my phone. Don, we're that was one of the more frustrating 30 seconds of my life. Right so. Okay, okay. We're, we're discussing the baseball field at yes. Gateway Middle. Um, right. So between C, which is infield only, and the whole field, um, we talked about Title IX. Has there been any knowledge that you have where middle schools would have sued because of the Title IX? I don't know that I can speak to but as I said in the building and grounds meeting and the previous meeting, the only place we ever run into, is, and I say we as in high school, uh, athletic facility issues with Title IX is, is baseball and softball because basically they're the only one where the two different boys and girls play on two different um, facilities, uh, as is going to be the case over there. Something that wasn't brought up there is – because we put the softball field integrated into the um, into the, the soccer and football field, we essentially gained a field there without having to build one over there. It's kind of an interesting thing. We used to use what's the phys ed field, which is now the, the turf field, was the middle school softball field. So we took that away when we built a phys ed field on the high school campus, the new practice field. So what we did is we integrated the softball field over there. If we hadn't done that, we, would, we could have an issue with not having a softball field at the same time as a baseball field and sort of be in the queue for that. Now, because we have an all-turf softball field, um, I think that you can make a case that we, we should have, you know, the similar facility for our boys as well. I understand it's expensive, but at the same time, I think over the time, the, the whole premise of turf is, is the whole change in maintenance. One, one point about, Turf infields, and we've got neighbors at Norwin and Hempfield and some others, Penn Trafford, who have done that. And, and to, a, to a school district, almost all of them are now in a feasibility study or, or underway to change that because of the problems they had um, playing it with the, the hybrid field. They still couldn't play when it was wet. They had issues with the ridge between the infield and the outfield. Um, obviously, I'm very, um, you know, 
positively encouraged about getting the whole thing, but I do understand you know, where we're at money-wise, and um, I'm just trying to lay everything out there that I know. Thank you. Do we know what the warranty is for this? And Don, do we do we rent out the middle school fields or would that? Well, we can. We, we certainly we certainly would have that ability to to earn revenue on that field as well. I mean, again, someone said the words hidden gem before. I think Mike talking about the bonus and in investments, but I mean, adding another field with the demand on fields in our area for baseball and softball tournaments would be uh, significant. Um, so yeah, we would rent that field at the same rates that we rent our, you know, our turf baseball field at night. Okay, any other questions? So Jack, uh, I'm gonna vote in favor of this and the major reasons that are pressing me toward that. Wait, in favor of C? Of, of D, I'm sorry. I guess. So the motion is for C. So we're talking about both. So I'm, I'm gonna vote no on C and then the next vote we're gonna have is on D and I'm giving, I'm giving you my vote yes for C. I have a comment too before we vote. No, I'm not sure. I think this is very relevant because. Uh, let, let's let Mr. Ritter oh, finish his. No, I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry, no. So the major reasons that are gonna push me toward voting for D would be uh, reduced maintenance, the cost realized upfront rather than the long term, and then the all weather usage. Mm -hmm. So I want the folks in the public to know that those are my reasons. Very good. Now, Ms. Sarucci. Okay, so if we go with D, we're taking about 500 plus thousand dollars from our fund balance, which is right now, according to your latest financial report, uh, Uncommitted, so we have unassigned four million three hundred, and then we have committed four point five million for a total of nine point four. So we will be taking from the unassigned fund balance, correct? Well, when the when the project's complete, right now you you won't be taking anything from the fund balance because we will be using the money from the construction fund. Well, I'm talking it. about if we go with D. If we go with D, yes, there won't be any money left from the fund balance to cover the project. So when the project's over, we're, we're going to probably be in a hole at least 300,000. We would have to transfer from the fund balance to the to the construction fund. That's just on change orders. Just on change orders, and so we don't know if any change orders are coming. We don't know. There could be an additional. Well, it, it, but fine. But it is a vote we're going to take. So no right. more questions or comments. Let's have a roll call on C, please, Bonnie. Mrs. McBride. Ms. No. Mr. Rare. No. Dr. Singh? No. Mrs. Warning? No. Mr. Williams? No. Mr. Balba? Yes. Mrs. Saruji? Yes. Mrs. Delaney? Yes. Oh, well. All right. So that failed. So now. A motion to select, a motion to approve item D. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve item D. Can there possibly be more questions or comments? Yeah, I have a couple. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> very good, Mrs. Well, Sarucci. It's very I guess good. I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of a resident and residents who always approach me about money, funds, taxes, and so forth, all of the above, and particularly with us in the still in the midst of our project uh the middle school and i guess that's that's a concern because again it, it's just more money and i have residents who are worried about that all right any other questions a roll call again uh bonnie mrs mungo mrs mungo aye mr ritter aye dr singh aye Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Bala? No. Mrs. Saruji? No. Mrs. Delaney? No. Mrs. McBride? Yes. There you have it. Alrighty. So, I think that's it for Section F, yes? Right, did I miss anything? No. All right, let's move on to Section G. Resolutions presented by board members. My papers here, I'm all a mess. What do we have? Security, right? Um, Ms. Cerucci, lay it on us. Yeah, this is mine, but it's not printed out, so I can't read it. No, I don't, I see that. Well, it's 
in board docs if anyone wants to see it. This is the amendment. I'll paraphrase it. So the policy right now gives all board members 24 seven unlimited access to every building. And I suggested that we modify that and I mean, we can modify it however we want, but I think in light Your of- recommendation was administrative office. My board. recommendation was the admin office because that's where we come for board meetings and that's where we come for meetings with the superintendent or assistant superintendents. Um, and then the others would be um, not automatic. They would have to request access or permission when visiting other buildings. And part of that is security. You know, we have nine badges that are out there right now that we all carry, leave in our cars, keep in our purses, briefcases, whatever, uh, that will open any building at any time, which I think is not necessary. That's incorrect. It gives us the opportunity to have all, all access, but some of us don't have all access. We've refused that capability on our badges and have never had access to the buildings. Okay, I'm not aware of anybody refusing that, but thanks for letting me know, John. Eight years, yeah. Yeah, I yeah guess. me too. I, I don't have I it either. There you go. No okay, well, that okay. makes my case that it's really not necessary that we all have that. All right, so that's there was the, that's the resolution. Well, there were two other reasons for that too. But in addition to safety and security, there was, um, there was amount of, would say stress or anxiety uh, that it can put on staff when board members unannounced show up in buildings. Did was, staff tell you that? I mean, yes, I, I have had I have had staff had, tell oh, me okay, that. I've been Teachers and administrators. Have never, they've always welcomed me. When I oh, did. of course they did. They're not going to say, "Hey, and take I a walk. You're, you're messing up the. So you're like, you're harshing our buzz here." Yeah. But okay. you know, everyone's antenna goes up. Uh, some people more than others, of course. Some people are very comfortable with it, but yeah. others yeah. are definitely aware when some one of us is in the building and wonder why, and immediately it goes out through the community. And, mm -hmm. and um, the more that we're in the building, the more we become part of sort of the process. Yeah. I, I, I rarely go into buildings, yeah. but... I don't think whenever I go into a building without fail, someone comes up and has a problem or a suggestion that's 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 fine, but it should go through the proper direction. I'm and not. I guess my situation was a little different because they were used to me being in the building because I had subbed for ten years. Oh yeah. yeah. So I mean that. That's different. But that being said, too, I still look at this as something that we should have addressed to when the new board comes on. Well, see, my purpose of doing this was to try to set things up for success when the new board does come on, because I think this current, I'm going to say frankly, this current school board sometimes, I think, has got into some bad habits. And the third point about this policy is that when board members randomly walk into buildings without appointments, they're taking our staff away from their jobs. And the staff member is not going to tell you you're the school board member. Oh, Mrs. Delaney, I can't talk to you right now. I'm busy, right? They're not going to do that. But, you know, do we realize? I that because I, being, having been there, I would not want to be disruptive to any staff member in that way in showing well, up. Again, so, to be clear, you, any board member can, it doesn't mean however we can. do this, yeah. you know, get in touch with the principal. You know, I'd like to stop by. Here's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think there, there's protocol. Yeah. Well, I, I, when I, I was, agree. Go ahead, Robin. I, I, I agree with Mary Bev. Um, I, I, I do have one question is how many board members currently are using the, the access and randomly just going in? I, I know I don't because I realize the security issue. Um, John has already said he doesn't. And Who else has not activated their access code? their ability to access the buildings. Dr. Singh, is yours active? Yeah, I, I'm sure it is. Uh, I sometimes go to Mike's and uh, and I can get in. No, okay, yeah. then it is. Yes. And um, since I'm talking, I, I would say, I mean, especially to Mary Beth that you know, you have been here eight years mm -hmm. and you had unchecked access and now you are going out 
and you are restricting the rest of us for the that's same a, that's a pretty solid point doctor so, well, let me and so that. i think that's good that's funny yes i am because i've had eight years experience doing this so let me just say one thing i have never um randomly walked in unannounced anytime even as a parent when i was on the school board if i would go to a school whether it was for personal use to meet with a teacher or whether it was for a meeting I always called the principal or texted them if I had their cell number and let them know that I was coming so even though I had that access to Dr. Singh I didn't use it that way um, and I knew that there was anxiety when I would show up especially when I was the board president so that if I was going up for an, an, I, uh, an IEP meeting uh, with my son's uh, gifted teacher or a conference or even a meeting um, with the school police uh, when I was head of the security committee, I would text uh, Mr. Stevens and say, hey, I'm coming up at 10 a.m. for a meeting with so-and-so, just so you know. So That is all well said, but the fact is that you had the access, and now, you know, you want to deny it for me, and I disagree with that. So my question to the board was, for those of you that, that think that you need it, why do you need unfettered access to all buildings at all times. I'm not, not saying that you can't go to the schools. I'm just saying we need to have a little bit more courteous and, and advance notice to do that. Well, okay. I think that should be directed to the to those who are just going into the schools and, and taking advantage of that privilege. Um, that's who I think it should be directed to. Well, I was trying not to call anybody out publicly, Ms. Mungo. Well, I, I think that's already happened. <laughs> now, as a as a parent and a school board member, I have scanned my license as a parent. I have not um, accessed, like when you know when I had to pick up pigs or something along that line. Um, I think one of the advantages, you know, you know, you talk about there there are nine badges out here, but we we were all elected to take care of these children and I and I, I think we can be trusted with with a badge and and uh, safety and security Michael knows anytime anybody swipes in any door mm -hmm. uh, but the other part of that is there are things that this this board and other boards have have seen and brought to the attentions of things that have need fixed or stuff along that line, windows or doors or that aren't working properly, that if somebody wouldn't have walked in, maybe that wouldn't have been reported. So as far as like a safety and security aspect of it, um, those that are up here and walk in and out of different doors and different buildings, you know, I, I do believe there does need to be a clear chain of command, as I agree with Jack, like, yes, please come to us and talk to us, but you know, please know that if, if you do that, we are going to take it to the appropriate people and not, uh, you know, so much as be on that issue, you know, or ask if they're, you know, if they're not comfortable taking it to the appropriate people. But there is a, a change in in the uh, chain of command and, and who is answering to who. So I think board members need to be cognizant of that and do it properly. Um, but I, I also agree with, with Dr. Singh, like that this is one of the, if you want to call it a privilege, but rare and small privileges of fighting to be elected and, and taking responsibility for our buildings and our students. And, you know, you've, you've had that for eight years, and I know you're mixing some of your experience with that, like, yeah, I have, and these are the barriers that we've come up with, but, you know, all these years, it, it, from my understanding, it hasn't been so much of a problem. I well, I, if I could say something real quick, um, Leslie, you, you made a statement that we're all trusted for the safety, and we're all entrusted in the safety of our children, which I agree. But we've seen, and I'm not saying anyone on this board, but we've seen cases in other school districts where board members have done some things that you know is is despicable um so i don't know if we've all had the same background checks that teachers have had um i i think if we're going to have access there needs to be some type of control you need to know who's in that building 
if there's a major incident um, and it, that person needs to be identified, they need to know where they're at because we know where all of our children are at and our teachers and all the other staff members if there's an emergency. Well, the, I do believe that, Mike, is there not a record as soon as we swipe and what door and building? And security. And yeah. security. Yeah, every time a badge is swiped anywhere in the district, uh, it is recorded who swiped and when. I understand that, but when that board member walks into that school, who's, who's guiding them around? We don't know where they're at if something happens. Yes, we, we have um, notification that they're in the building, they've swiped, but where are they at in that building? Well, the cameras would show that, right? Yes. I think she's kind of, I, I understand what you're saying, Robin. Yeah. You're I saying if there's an emergency, you're on your own because oh. Michael's not going to pull up um, the report in the middle of a crisis and say, um, where, where is Robin? She's in the building. Let me look at the camera. Is that what you're saying, Robin? Absolutely. Okay. And as an adult, that would be a risk that we are aware of. You know, I. But why should we bring extra risk to the school? I guess for me, I, I just don't see the upside in us having this unfettered access. I, 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 I under, I've heard both arguments. I understand them completely. What I don't understand, aside from Dr. Singh's assertion that we're lacking a privilege, and this is one of them, I, I just don't see the benefit. How, how does the district benefit from us being able to walk into any school during the daytime whenever whenever we feel like it, whenever it serves our purpose? Someone tell me how that helps the school district. Well, I think it still should be something that as a board that, that you discuss protocol, as I look at it, in professional courtesies. I, mean, I, I Usually if I do go up to the school, they know I'm coming. I'm, I, I know professional courtesy. And I can understand, you know, why should you even have that access if a lot of you aren't using it anyway, but it's still, I, I think it's an individual. No, I understand that, but I'm saying in terms of the benefit, the, uh, how does how does a principal, how does the school, how does the district benefit from me being able to walk into Evergreen, you know, in the middle of the week without without announcing my, my intention? How, how does that help anyone? Or the, set of eyes. Mm -hmm. or the swimming pool. What swimming pool? Or the swimming, I'm a swimming coach, a okay. diving coach. Okay. So if I have an access badge, I could walk in at any time and, and walk swim. right in and there are no cameras, <laughs> you know, in the swimming area mm -hmm. and an untoward person could do something untoward in there. So to not, to put myself under the leadership of the head coach and have to knock on the door and have him let me in, that shows that I'm there to serve the head coach. You know, he doesn't serve me, I serve him. So I'm, I'm oh, using that. You're using professional you courtesy. Access to the gym if you were a yeah. board member and you were volunteering, I would say Michael could be able to give you access to the yeah. gym on from 2.30 to 6.30, Monday through Friday. So I want to put myself under the proper chain of yeah. command, which would be the head coach. Courtesies, head coach. We all, we all do that. And the other thing we have to remember is we are not just handed a badge. We do have to get additional clearances and our FBI clearances in order mm -hmm. to, to do that. So the coach has to get a lot of clearances, a lot of training, cardiac. Yes. And As a, we're not coaches. So just board members in general have to do the Act 33 and the clearances and the FBI clearances. They're, they don't just hand out badges, even if you're an elected official. Yeah. As I said, I think we'll have a new board coming on, right. whoever is on it. So let's say we do vote to shut ourselves down from having all access. Is there any reason why any board member that really does have a desire or a need to get an all access clearance couldn't approach the superintendent and say, I need it and here's why, and then have the superintendent approve that? Have to then so John, it's like this, that we are elected to the school board by public. And that puts certain award of trust. And we should respect that. We are entrusted to serve. Right. Yes. And it gives some trust to you. Okay. All right. So I, right. We, I, I got you, Dr. Singh. So can, does anyone have anything new to offer on this? I think we've heard both sides. 
lots of minutes. Uh, so, would you like to change the policy, John, to add that? Like Mary Beth, yours, I'm, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. It it just says no. I don't remember. Do you access. remember what I said? I think I said instead of unlimited all buildings, I think I suggested we make it to this building only. Yeah, if anybody wants this, another building, they would have to go to the superintendent for well, access. I'm going to say for administration, anybody can get into administration because you have people walking off the street that they let in without scanning badges or anything when they're signing up their kids for classes for when I come to this door there's three buzz ins. There's the main one, there's the one to get up but nobody's checking and the one to get in there. Right. So you're saying complete access to administration. So someone's letting you in regardless of if you have clearances so or I'm not. I'm sorry, Ms. Warren, you're saying that if some stranger comes to this door, they're getting someone's just letting them in? If they're coming in to sign their student up, their child up for school. Or question. They have to be buzzed in. Right. Yeah, they're, they're being yeah. buzzed in. So I'm, I'm, so I'm, I don't, so I'm, I'm, I'm missing the point, I guess. I'm saying you wouldn't have to buzz in. And if you're going upstairs to see Dr. Rossi or Dr. Shakey, or if you're coming to see Mike or. They have to John, sign. We have a book out there. They have to right. sign in. We ask them what they're here for. I'm just we'll saying. To walk yeah. in to see all of administration. If you want a yeah. special pass to go to UP, then you should. Have so, to take the hours. So, so what's your point? Right, you're right. Someone, uh, essentially a stranger, who has to discuss their business is going to be buzzed in. I assume the person who's doing the buzzing asks, "Who are you? What's your business?" or whatever. But at some point, right before their background is checked, they're let in. So, um, so what is your point? That's, I'm just saying. So, if you have total access to administration, you're giving them total access, being buzzed in. Has this administration heard that the door to go upstairs is locked? You can't get right. upstairs. Exactly. Get upstairs. If someone buzzes a stranger and they cannot get upstairs. Exactly. I'm saying that. So yeah. I don't know what you're saying. You speak volumes. Never mind. So I, I have to ask, we're saying I guess people are abusing the badges. Is it to a point that it has been brought to the attention of administration that they've been abused? I don't want to put my administrators on the spot. This is a motion that I made, and I made it because I am leaving so that nobody would get mad at anybody. <laughs> so, Singh could be mad at me because I'm leaving. But, nope. um, you know, it is a fact that when we're in the buildings, I can tell you after eight years of experience that it makes people uneasy. Would Guy or Dennis, Dr. Rossi, or, or sorry, Dr. Chakey, agree that staff gets a little bit unnerved if we're walking around? They're, they're aware, they're definitely aware. They're definitely aware. Yeah. Um, is it ever a problem, maybe, that we could come in and take um, a staff member away from their duties, something that they should be doing? Is that? If, if you're, it, it, it all depends on the situation, but if you're having a conversation, with, if they have a duty, I mean, those yeah. are things we'd have to take a look at. But it, that, that's a possibility. And do uh, you think, I'm putting on the spot, don't you think that you know, sometimes employees might be reluctant to tell a school board member no. To say that again. It, it, tell them no, like I can't talk to you right now. I don't have a duty. Yeah. I have a. I mean, we put them in a little bit of an uncomfortable position. Yeah. It is my understanding that lots of school districts restrict it's school my board own. members' access. As, as is being suggested here, is that correct uh, or not? Uh, my, from my experience, yes. There's there's some. There's access, but there's limited access. Obviously, we want the board in the buildings. We want you to see, see all the great things that are happening in our schools. So that's not, I don't think. Yeah, not I'm not like, saying no. Yeah. So yes. we, I mean, we could probably have a compromise here, but. Yeah. Um, so realizing know. that it's 24 seven right now, like that absolutely has to change. Like there's no yeah. reason to have it in nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. well, at least limited. If people at least are these abusing, limited I guess I'm too. looking at us. And is not abusing. And when you said there are a number of schools that do have restrictions, I talked to a number of school boards yeah. that do not, simply because of the professionalism, the courtesies of not doing it. There's a respect. There's a, and then they came to consensus of that, whether, well, with their school board, without it being a resolution. You know that. And I guess I'm used to seeing how to, you work something out 
without having to make it into a resolution if everybody can be on the same page. Well, it's a board policy now, so. Yeah. So when I come into the administration building, I don't use my badge. I rap on the door, push the buzzer, and then the secretary, if someone's there, they buzz me in, and then I ask them to phone upstairs, and then the administrative secretary says, he's in a meeting, he can't come, or yes, he wants you to come up right now, then they buzz me upstairs. Mm -hmm. So I go through the highest level, which is the secretary here, and then you know, the secretary upstairs, in order to get to anybody, I, I respect their time. Yeah. And yeah. many times they've said, no, they're in a meeting right now, fine, I just pick a different time, that's no problem. But I would never, never barge in. Yeah. And even if I come, I I do pretty much as John, I'll not, I, I don't just usually don't think to use it. my badge because I want them to know if I come or if it's inconvenient, it helps them I don't have to stay. All right, so where are we? <laughs> you, well, like, you can tell they don't like my, my policy motion, so I don't know if you want to table it and try to work out something. Why don't we do I, that? I definitely suggest Why that don't we do that? Bingo's already started. Be, it needs to be modified in some way. I suggest that we have this resolution table till after the next school board election. John seconds. Yes, that's a motion. Susan John made a motion. motion. John seconded. I make a motion. Sure. Okay. <laughs> John seconds. I make a motion. Motion has been made and seconded. By John seconded. Yep. The roll call, please. Bonnie. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Dr. Singh. Aye. Mrs. Warren. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Bowen. No. Mrs. Scrooge. No. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mrs. McBride. Aye. Ms. Mondo. No. You know, I'm going to change my vote. I didn't think we could vote no, but I'm going to vote no because I think we already have discussed this well enough. I can't envision any new material coming across. So I'm switching my vote to a no. Motion, it has been tabled, it's five to four. Vote, John wants to vote again. Carry the torch, buddy. All right, what else do we have? Any other resolutions? No, comments from residents. It's my first ever empty house. Nobody here. People used to show up just to hear my hear my stuff. Now it's all stale. Report at bingo. <laughs> I, it's where I got to be, right? My wife's waiting for me, Robin. She's not going to be happy. Doctor Doctor Ross, we're going to get to some uh, reports. What we got. Uh, we just uh, we did a lengthy report last meeting. Just to update the first day of school, August twenty fourth. Uh, it's been busy at uh, all of our schools and campuses. And we're looking forward to um, welcoming our students back on August 24th. Oh, you got? Dr. Chakey, anything? Uh, we'd like to thank Dr. Anthony Kane for the equity report from last month. And uh, just yes. let everyone know that we'll be meeting with the GSD equity advocates at the beginning of school this year. And we're going to go through that report. We're going to take his recommendations. And uh, we look forward to working with him to accelerate some of the equity work within our district. Excellent. Anything else? How about some board members? We have any committee reports? Start with Mr. Ritter. I'd just like to hit a rewind. Let's do July again. This summer went way too fast. That's what I've been told. Ms. Delaney, what do you got for us? Well, school is going to be starting, and I know that uh, one of the things I used to enjoy doing was having posters uh, affirmative of what uh, the students would see when they come in, make them feel good about themselves starting. And I was just looking at even a few quotes and just in case any students are listening. Yeah, I don't say a few quotes. Because it was self-affirming quotes were always good and kids, and especially when you had them in the room, they look up and they think about those and that was always, uh, Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Things like yeah. that when you see them, I think it, it says a lot. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Mm -hmm. And maybe even another, and there are several. Um, one that, um, Maya Angela said, or maybe, yeah. She said, I learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. So, 
That's all I have, and I'm like about excited. I always be. get excited. I don't know why I get excited every school year, but anyway, I hope the kids are too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lane. Ms. Morgan. Um, I just want to wish everyone good luck for the start of the new school year. Um, do your best. And also thoughts and prayers out to our neighbors in Plump. Thank you. Thank you. Robin Mungo. No, thank you for technology. <laughs> Scotty Williams, do you have anything? I do. I just want to say hats off to the Junior Legion team and the coaches, the kids, and their staff for making it to the state this year. They had an incredible run. I'm proud of each and every one of them. Thank you. Dr. Singh. So I just want to add that today is India's Independence Day. So on Sunday at the Cathedral of Learning, it there will be from 12 to 4, food, music, and dance. Beautiful. What time is that? Did you say I could hear you? 12 to 4. 12 to 4. On Got Sunday. It. On Sunday. On Sunday. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Will, oh, will Dr. Singh be dancing? <laughs> oh, I, well, I, I have one and a half legs, so... <laughs> <laughs> so that's a yes. That's a no. Beautiful. Uh, Mrs. Sarucci, will you be dancing? No. Got anything else for us? I got nothing. Ms. McBride. I'm just excited about the start of the school year, um, mostly because I don't have to worry about my son being home anymore. Me too. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So no. motion. All Second. in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank aye. you. See everybody in Pitcairn. Bingo. Aye. Let's go.